All right, you crazy kids, welcome to uh, the first, po uh, po second animal podcast, but the first one in our series of uh, examination of the different processes that animals have to carry out and how they get them done. Okay, our first in the series is checking out how animals eat or feed and how they digest. Uh, and so let's get started. So feed, feeding and digestion. That's the first process that animals have to be able to do. So let's find out what it is. What do we mean by digestion? Okay. Digestion is not only breaking down food, but also absorbing the food that is broken, taken in and broken down. Okay. So no matter how you digest, you must have a means to break down food and you have to have a way to get those nutrients into every cell of your body, okay? So usually this absorption of nutrients, this taking into the cells of the nutrients does, involves some organ with lots and lots of surface area, um, meaning the more surface that you have to catch the nutrients, the more of the nutrients you can get into your body, okay? Um, you also have to have a means to get rid of food that can't be used. And what we're talking about here is solid waste, not liquid waste. That's a whole different thing, okay? Um, now, before we can talk about digesting and absorbing nutrients, we have to talk about how we get the food first. And animals have lots and lots of different ways for obtaining food. Uh, of course, you can be an herbivore and have eat plant material like this caterpillar who walks around on his dinner or the deer that go up to their dinner and, and gobble it. Uh, you can be, of course, a carnivore and consume other animals. Uh, you can be a parasite or a, a, a what is called a fluid feeder, that, and you get liquid food from animals that are living. Uh, alas, that is showing uh, the worms that were in a poor fish, okay? Tapeworms that are parasitic. Uh, you can be a detritivore, um, we often call them decomposers, and they do help decompose, but uh, decomposer is probably more precisely used to talk about something that, like a fungus that digests outside of its body. This guy would probably be more of a scavenger, but these terms are all really kind of used as synonyms. Detritivore is something that eats detritus. Detritus is waste. So anyway... So eating animals or that are already dead or waste products from animals and so on, okay? Filter feeding is a great way to eat and lots of animals do it. They filter tiny particles, tiny uh, plankton or something like that from the environment, which is nearly, which would be water in this case, hard to filter feed in the air. Uh, so filter feeders usually feed on plankton. This big old shark, believe it or not, is opening his mouth so wide, not because he wants to eat you, because he's trying to catching lots, trying to catch lots and lots of plankton. This clam is drawing in water through uh, its open mantle and also absorbing uh, lots of plankton and things like that. All right, so that's the way we get food into our bodies. How do we digest it once it's there? Okay, so modes of digestion. How do we digest and absorb our nutrients? the cellular level, okay? You can have each individual cell in your body, no, well, not your body, you can't do this, but simpler animals can, have each and every cell obtain its own food and digest its own food. Uh, this is the most primitive and simple means of digestion there is. There's no organs involved. Each individual cell, it's doing its own ingestion and its own digestion, okay? So in this case, each individual cell would be doing kind of like what we looked at with an amoeba. Um, you would be using food vacuoles and lysosomes. You'd be taking in food particles, as shown right here, uh, doing some endocytosis as you take those food particles in. That process of engulfing the food is endocytosis and then creating a food vacuole, as we see right there. The lysosomes would fuse with the food vacuole and digest 
uh, becoming what this illustration is calling a digestive vacuole, the food would be digested, and then any waste products would be eliminated by exocytosis, or just eliminating waste. Um, what animals would do this? What animals would rely on every cell of their body just kind of doing things on their own? And the answer is the most simple animal there is, and that is sponges. Okay, no, 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 not that kind of sponge, this kind of sponge, okay? Uh, sponges uh, draw, filter feed, they basically draw on water, and their little individual cells actually just kind of pick the parts of the, the plankton and things and, and eat individually, okay? Um, we'll talk more about that later. Another mode of digestion, the second one we'll talk about, is called having an incomplete digestive system. So this is a huge step up because at least now we have a digestive system. Before, every individual cell was doing its own food, obtaining its own food for itself. Now at least we have a digestive system with some organs, but it's not complete. Now what do we mean by not complete? Okay, this is a very simplistic drawing of a jellyfish. If you've ever seen a jellyfish, you know it's got kind of a blobby top and tentacles that hang down. These are the tentacles here, okay? Uh, but what you may not have noticed about a jellyfish is that it has a mouth, and the mouth is underneath that bell, that blobby top. This is the mouth right here, okay? Um, and so we have a mouth. And we also have a gut. So the jellyfish, yes, jellyfish are animals and they do eat stuff. They eat little fish, whatever they can get, plankton. They draw that food in to their mouths, okay? And it goes into the gut, which is outlined in blue here. And in this space, that food item is digested, digested, sorry. So it's digested and broken down. And then it gets absorbed into the tissues through the wall of the gut. But you should notice there is a critical body opening that is missing. There is no anus, which means any food that cannot be digested has to go out exactly the way it came in, and that is through the mouth, okay? So who would do that? We already said jellyfish do that. We can see that jellyfish getting ready to eat a actual fish that it's grabbed it, that it's gotten hung up in its tentacles. Also organisms called flatworms. Boy, I need to get rid of those drawings. Uh, flatworms, that's a marine flatworm. We'll be talking about this kind of flatworm later on. This is a much prettier marine flatworm uh, right there. Okay, now the mode of digestion that we are most familiar with is called a complete digestive system. We're not missing anything. It is a complete tube. It's not a sac like that incomplete digestive system. So yes, we have a mouth, a gut, and an anus. Hallelujah. All right. Uh, what this allows for is a much more efficient means of digesting food because we can kind of set up an assembly line. Different things can happen as that food passes through this one long tube. Okay. Um, so, for example, your food take, goes in through your mouth, it gets chewed up and swallowed and then it goes into the stomach and chemicals are added to it there and it's passed through uh, into the intestine where nutrients are absorbed and so different things are happening as it passes along this assembly line okay so those are the modes of dis digestion there are three there is the cellular level very very simple only the simple simplest animals do it the incomplete, where you at least have an organ system, but you are missing a critical opening. Um, and finally, the complete digestive system that is done by all the more advanced animals. All right, that's it. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next podcast.